All right, let's start with a little introduction of who the Basque people are and where they're from. So the Basque are from a very small country in Europe. As you can see, it's made up of seven provinces that are in two different countries. And go ahead and take a second here. Which two countries do you think that it's a part of? Did you guess Spain and France? Because you would be right. So how big is the Basque Country? The Basque Country is very, very small. In fact, if you were gonna compare it to Idaho, over here, it's smaller than Idaho. Idaho is actually bigger than the Basque Country. So the Basque culture is very, very old. They were very well known as fishermen and as whalers. Some of the most famous explorers, they actually had Basque sailors that would help them explore the world. So one of the neatest aspects of the Basque culture is the language. It is super unique and it's very, very ancient. Linguists think that it's over 8,000 years old and it didn't even get written down until about 500 years ago. So it was always passed down orally. So to be Basque, a Basque person, is to speak the language. That is how they view themselves and their Basqueness, is through the language, which is called Euskera. So today you're gonna be my honorary Basque and I'm gonna teach you how to speak a little bit of Euskera. We're gonna count to 10. Bat, bi, iru, lau, bost, Se, Saspi, Sortsi, Bedorazzi, Amar. Good job. You just learned how to count to 10, and today you're my honorary Basque. Here we are in our interactive children's sheep camp. Let's check out what life would have been like for an early Basque immigrant when they first arrived to Idaho. So the Basque began immigrating to Idaho in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Usually it was a young male worker who was coming here looking for better opportunities for their family. Life was hard in the Basque country and they heard that there was a lot of opportunities for jobs and to be able to make some money that they could hopefully send home to their family or even return to the Basque country after working here for some years. But a lot of them didn't speak English, they spoke Euskera. So a lot of them came here to be sheep herders or they worked in agriculture. The life of a sheep herder though was very hard. They were alone in the mountains for a big portion of the year and they were by themselves. So they would often live in a sheep wagon, just like this one. A year in the life of a sheep herder was hard and lonely, but it would start in the spring when the ewes would lamb. And so once they had all the lambs in the spring, they would then take these herds of sheep up to the mountains where they would graze for the summer. And this is when the sheep herder really earned his bread and butter, living in the sheep wagon, only checking in to get supplies maybe once a week, and taking care of the sheep and making sure they were together and safe. So once that was done in the summer though, it was their job to bring the sheep back down into the valleys in the fall so that they could either go off to the breeding season again or they could be sent to market. In the winter, they didn't have any work and so they would usually come back down to the cities and stay in a boarding house, which we're gonna learn more about later. One way we can get an idea of what the life was like for a young sheep herder is through something called arbor glyphs, which mean tree writing. Basque sheep herders would make arbor glyphs by carving images or writing into an aspen tree and over time it would create a scar which we can still see today. These arbor glyphs are kind of like a diary into the life of a sheep herder so we can really see what they were thinking about or going through at the time. And they were probably pretty bored up there so it was a good way to keep track of what daily life was like for them. This one that we have here in the museum, can you tell what this is a picture of? Here we are at the Cyrus Jacobs Ubraga boarding house. Let's go inside and check it out. Welcome to the Cyrus Jacobs Ubraga historic boarding house. Here we are in the sitting room of the boarding house, which is the oldest part of the house. This house was built in 1864 and is the oldest standing brick residence in Boise. Cyrus Jacobs was a wealthy mercantile who lived here during the very beginning of Boise when it was just becoming a city. You can see that through all the artifacts, like the ones in the bedroom here.
Much of the artifacts in this house belong to Cyrus Jacobs and his family. And even the ones they don't, they're still historically accurate to that time period. When we move through the house this way, we can see another one of the bedrooms. Now we're in the historic boarding house part of the house. This is when it was taken over by the Uberaga family in about 1910, 1920s. So what is a boarding house? Think of a boarding house kind of like an old timey Airbnb. It's a house where a family lived and occupied, in this case, the Uberaga family, but people could also come here to stay and pay to either have a meal or stay the night for one night, a week, months. There was even one boarder here who stayed for years. So even though it was kind of like a hotel, it was so much more than a hotel. Usually it was the women who would run and operate a boarding house. And it was their responsibility to cook, clean, do laundry, help with bills, and make sure that everything was working properly in the boarding house. Let's go check out over here and see where all the magic really happened. Here we are in the kitchen where Ermengilda Uberaga would have kept fast food cooking 24 seven. This is her original stove that she used to cook beans, chorizos, and all sorts of yummy things to keep the boarders fed and happy. Let's go see where they stayed. Here we are in the upstairs part of the boarding house. Let's check out what some of the typical bedrooms sort of look like. This one is not typical. This is where Ermengilda Uberaga stayed when the house was super full of people and they didn't have enough space. So she would stay here to make sure the boarders had all the extra room. Here is a typical boarding house bedroom. As you can probably see, it's not very big. There wasn't a whole lot of extra space, and so sometimes boarders really had to squish and get cozy to fit enough people in these rooms. You can also see that there's a lot of storage space. And that's because most of the boarders were sheep herders who would be gone for the summer. And most of them didn't need to keep their fancy clothes like their three-piece suits in the sheep wagon with them. A boarding house like this could have had anywhere from 10 to 20 people staying with the family at any given time. So it was crowded, but I'm sure they were one big happy family. The boarding house has served as a really important transition between life in the Basque Country and a new life here in the United States. So while it was difficult, the boarding house has made it a little bit easier. Let's go have one last look downstairs and see if we missed anything. So why is a Basque boarding house so important? Not only did it serve as a transition between old life in the Basque Country and a new life here in America, but it also played a very important role in keeping the Basque culture alive. When people would gather in a Basque boarding house like this one, they got to speak Euskera, the Basque language. They would eat Basque food, like tree shows. They would play Basque games like moose or um, listen to Basque music. Sometimes right here in this room, they would clear out the entire room so that they could play music and have lots of dances deep into the night. Basically, when they came here, they got to practice Basque culture. And so the boarding houses are a really important reason why the Basque culture is so alive and well and thriving today like it is. Let's get it, Gasco, or thank you, for joining us on this tour of the Basque Museum today. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or check out our website, basquemuseum.us, to see what's going on. Another great way to be involved is to become a member. So until next time, agur.